All right, taking our two and three quarter inch length flat bar that we were gonna use to make the motor mounts. This is for the Y axis and using this drill guide that I printed out earlier off camera, I lined it up, use a hole punch to mark the spots, clamping both of these together. For the top one, I'm gonna drill directly through the center on both, through both pieces of aluminum because this is gonna be the rod, the transmission rod that sends force from one side of the printer to the other so that both ends of the um, carriage can move evenly. You see the one that we use for the motor and this is the other side that the non-motor side that received the transmission rod. We ended up making this hole a lot, uh, a little bit bigger to fit the bushing and the the rod that'll sit in this area. With this one, we would drill some holes big enough for M3s in these spots. We we'll also use a hole saw to expand this. So this is what the mount plate in, ends up looking like. Fits over motor. Notice that your NEMA 17 has a raised up center. That's why this hole needs to be that big so that it can fit over that center and still be flush. And the holes line up. This is how we end up mounting it. We'll use some M3 five half inch pitch or half millimeter pitch times eight millimeter length screws. We'll only use three because this position here, this we want to leave this one out just to allow room for the belt and for the the carriage to slide as far as possible back towards this pulley. And this will get in the way because the, the clearances, the tolerance is quite tight where this will be mounted. We we'll end up drilling holes through here but this is just, we're putting this in here as a placeholder for right now. Um, the orientation may change depending on where we mount our electronics. Right now I have this coming off the bottom, but it may end up going off to this side. I'm not sure yet, because I'm thinking about mounting the electronics in a different place than the last printer. So, but this is easily changed. Take out, a, take out these bolts and just turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to reposition the motor. For those of you that may decide to go with this brass tubing, so I can focus on this. This is what it is. These are the dimensions. I got this at a local um, craft store, craft and hobby store. Okay, and you probably can get this online as well. Okay, because the outer diameter of my <clears throat> brass tubing or bushing was 3 8 of an inch, I used that 3 8 inch drill bit to expand the hole in the aluminum plate and then used a C-clamp to push this through, keeping the end of this over the hole because we don't want this coming out any further because we, are, we do not know the spacing that the Tommy pulley will need on this side. When you buy your stepper motor, oh, I really hope for this build that you bought a stepper motor that has a shaft long enough to accommodate the pulley and the coupler. Okay, this is the rough setup. As you can see, we have this just clamped in place just to get a look at the location and this is how that transmission rod will sit go to the other side this bar is a little bit long we'll end up cutting that down um, before for the final installation and we have to be mindful of the location of how much clearance we'll end up having over here for the pulley and the um, the, the 
timing belts. And before and definitely before we um finalize the position of this transmission rod right here, we have to put in our Z-axis threaded rod and get that position set. So before we can continue with fastening this in and getting this positioned, we'll work on the threaded rod.